Salut les amis! Welcome to my channel! So, for today's video, I've had the great privilege to be invited to the Florid Art Express! Yay! So I wanted to thank very, 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 very much every great artist in the Florid Art Express. And thank you for the opportunity. I hope I'm gonna make you proud. So for this special video, I wanted to play with this poster frame. I found this one at work, the front glass broke, so I'm left with this metal frame. Then I think I'm gonna spray paint. I don't wanna keep the color, so maybe a brilliant black paint. I'm not sure yet. And then for the MDF background, I'm gonna have some preparations to do because there are holes in it. So I'm gonna prep this and then I would like to do a double ring pour with layered cups and I would like to achieve some marble effect. And then I would like to use this wooden fern leaf that I'm gonna glue on top of the canvas and before gluing it, I'm gonna paint it with, uh, uh, I'm not sure, pigments or pearl paints or metallics. Uh, uh, I'm gonna see. And for my French viewers, I bought this in a French store called Cultura. And yay, made in France! Finally something good we made, yes! So I hope you're gonna enjoy this and I go, I hope I'm gonna enjoy this too. So let's get to it. So first I took out the MDF board from the frame and I put the frame away. I'm gonna spray paint it black, but I'm gonna do it outside and I won't film this uh, because it was a very rainy period at the time and I had to spray paint very quick between two, uh, two rain pours. So uh, this part you won't show, but you know the drill. First, I had to uh, fill every single hole I had in this uh, board and it was going all the way through the board. So I took some putty, some instant filler, and really pressed it down to go through the holes, um, to be able to uh, fill the holes and make a really nice layer on top so that the board could handle liquid paint. Then I sanded it with a hand tool, get rid of all the dust it's left out with a, a dry cloth and it was ready for my first layer. At first I wanted to prep this with gesso and I discovered a little too late that my, my gesso was very, very thick. I tried spraying it on the board, but uh, it wasn't uh, enough help. So I did the first layer just like that. And the first layer was in two parts, one uh, vertically and then one horizontally. I did, that, I did that with every single layer I made and I left it out to dry, I think this time for uh, 24 hours. I was doing this at noon, at night, uh, in the evening to uh, be able to let it dry overnight and uh, do it again when I went back from work the other day. And uh, as you can see, because it's very hard, uh, it took me quite some time to get a nice and smooth coverage because of the thickness of the gesso. When the gesso was drying, I went to my leaf. I first uh, prepped it with black gesso and then I decided to make a first layer with Arteza Lustrous Black, with, which is a uh, blue black metallic blue black I really love this color but I thought it was uh, too uniform so I didn't want to leave it like that so this is going to be my first layer and uh, I wanted that to be a base for the colors that I'm gonna use later 
which uh, are going to be some craft paints and I it was craft paint craft paints that I have never used before so uh, because I didn't trust them I wanted to have a nice first layer then the next evening I went back to my gesso but I uh, first diluted it directly in some box with water and as you can see it was way easier to apply and I dried it with my my hair dryer when I was in a rush because I wanted to go back to my fern leaf and test those craft paints that I was talking you about. So uh, they came from Action, it's a craft store, but they were very thick and the texture was weird. So I decided to uh, do one part Easy Creel, which is a drying retarding agent and one part paint. I did that with every single color. I had a gunmetal color. I had a kind of amethyst, the gunmetal powder, powder, the gunmetal powder color you can see there. Then I had an amethyst metallic paint and the gunpowder was fine. Then I tried the amethyst one and the color went all patchy in some places so I couldn't get the color to show up nicely and some of the colors went lumpy on other areas so it was really weird um, my paints this craft paint with easy krill turned out uh, like mayonnaise so uh, this was the first layer and I really struggled to apply them this part has been sped up I think 20 times so um, it was a very, very long process and the result weren't, was, wasn't great. Uh, my transitions weren't smooth, uh, some colors didn't really show evenly. So after the blue I used a emerald green. I think this was the worst of all, this emerald green. And so I decided, okay, I'm gonna do the best I can with these colors and transitions. Uh, the last color was, was a kind of a mustardy yellow. So I said to myself, okay, this is the first layer. We'll see if a second layer is gonna be good. So I finished the work with the yellow and left it out to dry hoping and praying the drying process would make things smoother in the end. So we'll see about that, I think, in a moment. And, uh, you know, I had to go over the yellow twice, I think, for the first layer, because it wasn't really great. Sometimes craft paints are good and sometimes they aren't. And this time it was a nightmare. Then I went back to the board. I wanted to uh, finish the preparation with some satin enamel house paint uh, to make a very big barrier, a very uh, thick barrier to prevent my MDF board underneath from cracking or warping or anything. So uh, I did it uh, once vertically and once horizontally. Then it was time to dry up with a hairdryer and try the second layer of my craft paints. And I must say, it didn't turn out good. So uh, after I did all my layers I, and I let it dry, it was so horrible that I decided that I was going to spray paint it with some other colors that I'm going to show you later. And as I did it outside, I won't be able to show you the process. You're going to see the dry result afterward. Then it was time for the pouring. And as you can see, I prepared a very big cup. At first, I thought I'm go I was going to do two separate layered cups. And then I changed my mind and did a very big dirty cup. 
but I didn't prepare enough white paint so uh, I used it too sparingly and the result turned out too co colorful for my taste but all in all I think it was great so I used as of, of my colors I had some Venetian rose some iridescent blue black, blue black some sienna some metallic browns I think I had some coppers, some gold. This one was a paint gray. I think, yes, it's paint gray. The copper is here. Some pearl whites as well. Some uh, brownish grays. And uh, white between the layers. I even added some, uh, this is a pearl white. I even added some gold at some point with no rhyme or well reasons. This is an ochre paint, I think. Another white paint, white pearl paint. Another layer of paint gray. Here comes the gold. And then terra rosa. It's a really nice color and some of my white. I think I kept the satin enamel house paint to do my white layers. Touch the bubbles and then I layered some white to to use as a pathway for my pouring. I wanted a uh, wandering strain pour and that's when my camera decided to shut down before I could even know it. So you're never gonna see the pouring process, just the end result. So now I'm putting, I'm putting the MDF board back into the frame that I spray painted. And uh, even though I prepped it well, my MDF board warped kind of a lot. But it was manageable uh, once I put it back into frame. It was okay, so you can see the overall results of my marble pour. I'm going to show you some close-up of this, of some area that I really liked. And it's not wide enough for me, but it was it was quite good. Then I took my cordless glue gun, put some gun, some some glue on the center of the leaf, and since the board was warping. I had to put some glue in the middle, on the tail of the feather and on the point of some leaves that were naturally touching the canvas to get it to stay into place. And I added some more uh, glue afterwards uh, when uh, the first layer was dry to get it to stick better. And uh, there I'm showing you the spray paint I use. On the right side is the glossy black. In the middle it was a marine blue metallic. And on the left it was some avocado metallic paints. And I'm very glad I did that because with spray paints, uh, depending on how high or how low you spray it, you can have uh, either some very uniform effects that I got with the black in the center that I sprayed first and with my dark blue metallic I sprayed it from um, a little higher up to get some um, ombre effect. Uh, I am taking my time to show you the background as well. So you can see the, the transition is really smoother and I did the same with the avocado metallic paint from very up high and I really got the ombre effect that I was looking for. So if I had to do it again, either I won't use tube paints and go straight for the spray paints or I'm gonna try it with uh, some high quality metallic paints like my Aitiza pearl paint or something. So you can see the overall result in natural lights. Then I decided to show you how it's, uh, how it's shining under, under um, 
spotlights under my, my uh, house lights. And uh, I really like the end result of this. So I decided to hang it off one of my walls in my uh, waiting room in my vet practice and my clients loved it very well and I think it goes very well with the, uh, the redecoration I made for this room. So that's it for my piece for today. Make sure you uh, are going to go and watch every other artist on the Express and I hope I'm going to see you back in my channel very soon. Bye guys!